Hey everybody, today I'm going to be talking about Stephen King's 1979 novel, The Dead Zone. I'll show you what to look for when trying to identify a first US edition, a first UK edition, and take a look at the deluxe illustrated edition by PS Publishing from 2020. The Dead Zone was sort of a turning point for Stephen King. It was his first novel published by Viking after publishing his first five books with Doubleday. It brought a larger um, trim size and a higher quality and more deluxe feel. For comparison, here is a copy of the Doubleday edition of The Stand. And you can see that the Dead Zone is significantly larger. The Stand and the other Doubleday books are pretty short and squat by comparison. But starting with The Dead Zone, um, Stephen King's books all carried the fairly uniform size of 9.5 by 6.25. It looks really sharp on the shelf. But for a first U.S. edition, I'm going to look for a dust jacket price of $11.95. The Viking Press address on the back, um, the back flap of the dust jacket. As well as the Viking Press address on the copyright page and the language first published in 1979 by the Viking Press. There will be no number line on the first edition. When you take the jacket off, the first US edition, you have black boards, well, dark, dark gray boards, with a black cloth covering over the spine and lettering imprinted in gold. Looks pretty nice and SK's initials embossed into the front cover. The US first edition was published in a print run of only 50,000 copies. I know that sounds, and I know it sounds like a lot, um, but later uh, first printings of Stephen King books were in the hundreds of thousands, um, if not million. In fact, 1987's The Tommy Knockers, there are a million copies, um, or were a million copies printed of what is often considered the first edition. So 50,000 makes it the rarest, certainly, of the Viking and beyond era. The Double Days had smaller print runs. So it is fairly hard to find, as it is now 43 years old, and, um, you know... 43 years old, 50,000 copies that get used and loved and not necessarily taken care of, it can be hard to find in decent shape. The UK first edition was published in 1979 by McDonald, and like a lot of UK editions from this era, it does turn up. It's not hard to necessarily find on eBay, but it is hard to find one with all the proper points for a first edition, starting with a printed price on the dust jacket. The first edition should have a printed price of £5.95 net in UK only. I have seen a nearly identical, slightly later release that had a higher price on the jacket. Look for £5.95. And on the spine, look for M and J Raven. This jacket spine is prone to fading, and this one is faded. Um, initially, you can kind of see how the lettering was orange, and it has faded to yellow. But at least it's mostly uniform. I have that as some consolation. And on the copyright page... Copyright 1979, look for first published in Great Britain in 1979 by McDonald General Books. There will be no number line on this one. Unlike a lot of 80s and even 90s era Stephen King books, 
uh, published in the UK, the Dead Zone was printed on a higher quality paper. The only reason I know that is because it is not subject to the same amount of darkness and tanning as a lot of books from the UK from this era. If you pop off the jacket, you have black boards all the way around and nice gold lettering on the spine. That is the first UK edition of The Dead Zone. In 2020, PS Publishing in the UK released another one of their distinctive um, illustrated deluxe editions, and this time it was of The Dead Zone. And it is, in my opinion, one of the best that they've done. Full color artwork, starting with the full color artwork illustrated slipcase, the dust jacket, full color illustrated. Here's the image on that. I love how they use the 1987 um, author photo from the Tommy Knockers, one of Stephen King's least loved books on their releases. I just I think it's kind of a quirky choice, and I'm a fan. The boards, full color, illustrated. The end papers, full color, illustrated. Very interesting. And then throughout this book, not even kidding. There are, I think when I counted, there are 30 or more full color illustrations. I'm not even kidding. As far as their deluxe editions go, this one feels very deluxe indeed. And also what makes it unique is that the illustrations are not printed on special stock and tipped in. They are printed directly into the text block of the book, which is kind of a nice touch and the artwork does not suffer in quality because of that. Like all PS releases, as I'm tipping through the pages, you can sort of see where the artwork is. It just keeps going and going. It's pretty incredible. And like all PS releases, this one is signed by the artist limited to a thousand copies signed by artist Tomislav Tikulin. I apologize if I butchered the name. Uh, this is copy number 384. Some PS releases feature a facsimile Stephen King signature. This one did not for whatever reason, and I could take it or leave it. Um, I like seeing the facsimile when they add it, and I don't really miss it when it's gone. But anyhow, as far as PS releases go, I only became aware of them um, in the last few years. I've not bought any on the aftermarket. Um, I try to be there on day one when the bell rings and order straight from the publisher um, to get the best price. They have a nice library of Stephen King um, deluxe editions at this point and of the handful that I have, I have to say that Dead Zone is um, right up there, arguably the nicest and the best and my favorite. Like with all their uh, releases, PS did a larger print run, um, more bargain um, edition for us lowly peons, and then a lettered edition for people, um, Stephen King collectors that breathe the more uh, rarefied book air, limited to 26 copies, and that one is signed by Stephen King. It's incredibly expensive, um, and I believe went to subscribers of the series, so it was never actually offered for a public sale. Um, it's a really interesting item, as are all of their lettered editions, but for my money, the artist edition is pretty nice. Um, uh, Dead Zone was also released in a limited edition of, I believe, 1,300 copies in 1993 by the Eastern, Eastern Press in their typical gold-edged, um, distinctive leather cover style. 
I'm not a huge fan of the look of their books, um, so I've never sought that one out. Um, it also was reprinted in 2004, which is um, another thing I'm not a huge fan of. A publisher like PS has their sort of one-and-done approach where they release the book, and then if when it sells out, it sells out, and it's out of print. But Easton um, reprinted another 1,300 copies, almost identical to the original, with the exception of some of the gold... Um, decoration on the spine. You have to be really careful and know what you're looking for. But anyway, I am more than happy with the lavishly illustrated PS Publishing edition that I have in my collection. The Dead Zone is classic, iconic Stephen King. I didn't read it until the last few years um, when I finally decided to buckle down and start at the beginning and um, go in chronological order and pick up all the titles that I hadn't read. I don't know why I never picked this one up. Um, I'm now just a couple of titles away from having read the entire Stephen King library, and I'm very excited um, about that. But to me, this really was a watershed work for Stephen King. His first um, novels and collections, the Doubleday books, uh, really were sort of classic horror archetypes and the dead zone while also featuring a supernatural element and certainly um, elements of horror does seem to be a slightly more intimate and personal um, not quite as well for instance end of the world in the stand this is more of a character driven single main character um, dealing with the ups and downs, the ins and outs of his struggle with his um, his recovery and the supernatural powers that his accident bestows on him. Um, it is top 10 Stephen King for me uh, overall and out of the entire body of his work. It is um, definitely one of my favorites and I hope that you have enjoyed this. I hope it has been useful. And as always, I will see you next time. Thanks a lot. Bye.